verse 4 of the hymn says, Thy word commands our flesh to dust. Return ye sons of men. All nations rose from earth at first and turned to earth again. Now, in the King James Version, this shows up in Psalm 90 verse 3 where it says, Thou turnest man to destruction, and sayest, Return ye children of men. This verse of the hymn directly mirrors these sentiments that I just read in Psalm 90 verse 3, addressing the, the, the transient nature of human life and the inevitability of returning to dust as decreed by God. He says, We will return to dust. I mean, Go dig up a coffin. Well, don't, don't, don't do that. <laughs> I'm, I'm joking. Don't do that. Um, but you know that, that our bodies go to dust once they're, they're dead and buried. Um, so God decreed that we go back to dust when we die. But the, the hymn poetically expands on, on this theme reflecting on the universal existence of mortality. All nations rose from earth at first and turned to earth again. So it's not just one person or one thing, or it's all nations, everyone. We all go back to dust where we came from. In the New Testament... 2 Corinthians 5.1 in the New International Version says, For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven, not built by human hands. This verse offers a New Testament perspective on the transient or temporary nature of earthly life, the earthly tent. And it contrasts it with the promise of eternal life in heaven, providing a hopeful counterpart to the theme of mortality explored in the four, fourth verse of the hymn. You see, as I, as I've said before, it's just a temporary life here on earth. And if we know God, if we, if we have accepted Jesus and believe in him and trust in him, then our home is not on this earth. This is just our temporary residence. It's like we're, we're waiting for our house to be built. The, buying a home. And we did that several years ago. Huh, lots of years ago, actually. Um, we were renting a house. Our temporary home. And we were waiting for our our home that we were purchasing to be built. So we stayed in that, in that rental home as, as temporary residents, as transients. Um, just like we're, we're temporary residents of this earth. We're kind of, you know, we're, we're, it's like we're renters. We, we don't, this is not our home, our, our final home. Our final home is heaven. Just like our home was that, that house we were purchasing. So we sold it. We don't own it anymore, but that's okay. Um, the point was that, that we were waiting in, in a rental until we could move into our home that was being built for us. We're waiting here on this earth as temporary residents until we can move to our complete, completed home that is being built for us in heaven. I can't wait for that day. Now, let's go on to verse 5, which says, A thousand ages in thy sight are like an evening gone, short as the watch that ends the night before the rising sun. Psalm 90 verse 4 in the King James Version says, For a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday, when it is past, and as a watch in the night. 
So this verse of the hymn directly reflects the imagery and message of Psalm 90 verse 4, illustrating the concept that to God, even a thousand years are as fleeting as the previous day or a brief watch in the night. So the hymn uses poetic language to emphasize the, the brevity or shortness of human perception of time compared to God's eternal perspective. See, we think things are forever. I mean, we think things in, in our lives are just going to last forever, but they're not. They're just temporary. And we really get our time mixed up. We think that, that God's taking his time, that, 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 that it should be faster than that because we want things done right now. But we have to remember that God's timing is not our timing. And to him, a thousand years are as but a day. Or as the King James put it, a thousand years in thy sight are as but yesterday when it is past. So let's look at look at the New Testament in Second Peter chapter three, verse eight in the New International Version says, But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. This verse reiterates the concept that God's understanding and experience of time are vastly different from human perceptions, aligning well with the message in the fifth verse of the hymn about the relative shortness of time from the divine perspective. Knowing that, you know, a thousand years to, to God are like a day to us. And a day is like a thousand years. I, and, and I can't say that I comprehend this because uh, my human mind can't quite comprehend it. I just know that I, I have to wait on God's timing. And that's what this verse is talk of, of the hymn and the verses in the Bible are talking about. They're talking about it's God's timing, not ours. Um, whether it's fast or slow to us, it is on time, exactly on time in God's timing. Now, as we move on to verse six, let's, let's read the, the words to the, to verse six of the hymn. It says the busy tribes of flesh and blood with all their lives and cares are carried downwards by the flood and lost in following years. This, uh, this verse is often left out of, of the um, more contemporary uses of this song. There are about three verses. There's technically this, this, this song has nine verses, which is what we're going through. Um, normally, six are used in the hymnals and, and things like that now. And this is one of the verses that's left out. But if we look at Psalm 90 verses five and six in the King James version, this is what it says. Thou carriest them away as with a flood. They are as, as a sleep in the morning. They are like grass, which groweth up in the morning. It flourisheth, flourisheth and groweth up. In the evening, it is cut down and withereth. Now, this verse of the hymn captures the essence of that Psalm 90 verses 5 through 6 and emphasizes again the transient nature of human life and, and our endeavors, whatever we're doing. All of it's temporary. The imagery of being carried downwards by the flood and lost in following years reflects the psalm's depiction of life as temporary and quickly fading, like the grass that flourishes in the morning but is cut down by evening. Have you ever looked at, now this is talking about grass here, but have you ever looked at like flowers that 
um, bloom in the morning. They're like beautiful. They open up in the morning. They're so pretty, but by evening they're all withered. Now, as, as I've said before, I, I can, I can kill any plant, not on purpose, but it happens. I cannot seem to keep them alive. It's amazing. My kids survived, but with plants, we have some roses out in front of our house and, and there's so many times I'll look and I'll walk by and, and they're so beautiful though. If they open up in the morning and they're just so pretty, but then the heat hits them and they're, and they're just shrivel up and, and, and die and droop. And that's what this, this verse in this song and, and in the Psalms is talking about that, that life here and our, and our work here is temporary. It's just fleeting and, and quickly fading away. Not like our eternal life, which is what we need to be resting our, our hopes on. In James 4.14 in the NIV says, whereas we know that know not what shall be on the morrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. So this verse from James resonates with the message in the sixth verse of the hymn, highlighting again the temporary nature of, I'm sorry, of human life and the scarcity and uncertainty of earthly pursuits, reminding believers of the short nature of their existence in contrast to the eternal constancy of God. Because you see, as I said before, we're, we're temporary residents of this earth. And the things that we do here quickly fade away and they're uncertain. But God is not uncertain. God is not temporary. He is eternal. And because we have can have that faith in him, we, if we put our faith in him, if we put our trust in him, we too can have that eternal life. And we too can lo- look forward to that hope of one day being with him and spending eternity with him. Now, verse seven of the hymn says, <clears throat> let me not choke on that water. <laughs> anyway, verse seven of the hymn says, time like an ever-rolling stream, bears all its sons away. They fly forgotten as a dream, dies at the opening day. Now, it's mostly like in verse 6 of Psalm 90. Um, But let me read verses 5 and 6. Make sure I've got verses. Yeah, I do. Thou carriest, carriest them away as with a flood. They are as a sleep. In the morning they are like grass which groweth up. In the morning it flourish, flourisheth and groweth up. In the evening it is cut down and withereth. So the seventh verse of the hymn vividly portrays the relentless flow of time similar to the imagery in in verses five and six of psalm 90 likening it to an ever rolling stream that inevitably carries all of humanity with it the comparison of human existence to a dream that disappears at dawn further emphasizes the transient nature of life and the often fleeting memory of individual lives in the in the grand flow of time. I mean, you think think about it. Well, let's take the stream first. The stream. You ever throw something in, or drop something in a stream, or watch you know a piece of driftwood, or 
you know, so many times you'll see a bunch of stuff just floating downstream. It's not stopping. It just keeps going. Just like life, it keeps going and carry, is carried away. And the, the, the fleeting memory of, of, of a dream, I, it, you wake up and it's, it's gone. And so many times and so many people don't remember their dreams. I, I don't remember a lot of them. Some I do, some I don't. Um, some seem very, seem very real, but when you wake up, they're gone. And it, it just shows that, that life is the same way. That's what Psalm 90 is saying. And so is this, this verse seven in, in the song is, is that just like a dream, it, it's gone in the morning. Um, and over the grand flow of time, our lives are often forgotten. What we do here on earth, but what we do toward our heavenly home, toward bringing others to our heavenly home, that's what should be remembered. That's, that's our legacy. What legacy are you leaving to those who know you? I want to leave a legacy that, that I followed Christ and that I encouraged others to follow Christ. That would be the best legacy I could ever leave. First Peter one twenty four in the NIV says, For all men are like grass, and all their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall. So this, this verse in First Peter reiterates the shortness of human life and glory. Kind of like the, the, the flowers I was talking about with the, uh, that are bloom in the morning and die in the evening or the grass that comes up and then is cut down or withers. So that, that goes well with the message of verse seven about the life on this earth, not being permanent and the unstoppable progression of time. <laughs> 